I have a GED inequality word problem for you and I just want to make sure that we review this really quick. Equations are balanced with the same value on each side of the equal sign. So 2 plus 1 on the left of the equal sign is a 3 and because there's an equal sign what's on the right of it has to be a 3. Okay, so that's an equation. An inequality is a mathematical statement that contains greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, okay? So remember, this bar underneath the sign means or equal to, okay? And that's between two expressions. So if we have 2 plus n is greater than 3, for this to be true, n must represent a value greater than 1. If it were 1, then we'd have 3 is greater than 3, and that wouldn't be true, would it? So if n was greater than 1, like a 1.5 or a 2, then it would be greater than 3. That would make it true, right? So that's an inequality. And we can use inequalities to help us find limitations or boundaries of how much money can be spent per person at a party, a wedding, or a dinner. And that's what we're going to do. Lisa's planning a birthday party for her grandfather. She has a budget of $540 for a cake, lunch food, and decorations. And Lisa expects 20 family members to attend. Now, the cost of the cake and decorations is $300. Which inequality shows how to find the value of X, that's the amount she can spend per person for lunch. So, let's check this out again. She's got a budget of $540. That means that's all she's got. She has to get a cake, lunch food, and decorations. There's 20 family members that she expects to come, and she needs to feed them. And the cost of the cake and decorations is $300. We have to figure out which one of these would help her find how much she can spend per person for lunch. So we have a, B, C, D, and we can see this is greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, another greater than or equal to, and another less than or equal to. We have to figure out which one makes sense, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to think, if we take away the cost of the cake and the decorations, that $300 from her $540, we'll see her budget for lunch food, won't we? We'll see how much is left that she can spend on lunch. And we can divide that lunch food budget by the number of people attending. So if we take 300 away from this and then divide the difference by the 20 family members, that would tell us how much per person, right? So we can divide the lunch food budget by the number of people attending to find the cost per person. So we know X is how much she can spend per person for lunch. So, C and D are not correct because we wouldn't multiply the $300 for the cake and decorations by the cost per person. We're trying to find the cost per person. Well, how many persons are there? <laughs> There's how many people? 20. So, that tells us right away that it's not going to be C or D. We're going to multiply the 20 people times that amount per person, aren't we? That's the number of people. So we can cross out C and D right away and eliminate them. And the clue words per person tell us we're multiplying the amount of people by X. So we know it's A or B. So it's going to be 20X. Now she only has $540 to spend and she can't go above that amount. That's all she's got. So if you look at A, it says it's greater than or equal to $540. Well, it can't be. She's only got $540, so it can't be greater. So it's got to be B. It, she can spend less than or equal to $540. That's all she's got. And using that process of elimination will help us get closer to the correct answer. We got rid of C and D. We knew it was only A or B. And then we looked at A and said it can't be greater than that, so it's got to be B, and that's using the process of elimination. Instead of having a one out of four chance of getting it right, we moved it so we had a one out of two chance of getting it right, and then we honed it down even more, okay? To actually solve the problem, we take B, that 20X plus 
is less than or equal to $540, and we add a negative 300 to each side of the inequality because we're trying to get x by itself. And this cre creates a zero pair here, doesn't it? Plus 300 minus 300 makes a zero. When we take it away from the 540, it leaves us with 240. So now we have 20x is less than or equal to 240. We can divide both sides of the inequality sign by 20, and this makes a giant 1, doesn't it? Same numerator and denominator. So we have x is less than or equal to 12. So that means she can spend $12 per person for lunch food or less, and it'll be within her budget, wouldn't it? Now, you can see the links in the description to Lesson 21 in the GED Math Playlist that talk about inequalities and problems, okay? Even a little factoring. So I hope this was helpful, and if any of you pass your GED test, let me know, okay? I'll be very proud, and I'm rooting for you. I hope you do well, okay? See you next time. Bye.